Hi, welcome to the 8th episode of Coding with Amadeus. We're building a smart mirror and today we're going to connect to an online weather service to fetch the latest weather forecast. We're gonna do it in an asynchronous fashion, so we'll also do a little code refactoring. And I just got this uh, two-way mirror film. It's marketed as a privacy window film that you stick onto your window to make it reflective from the outside. And here I have three feet by 15 feet. So really a lot of material, got it for $30. I'm still waiting for a spray bottle with an applicator. All right, so let's get coding. As usual, we'll start by syncing the GitHub and creating a feature branch. We'll call it live weather. In previous episodes, we built quite a sophisticated infrastructure of models and view models. So here we have the weather model, which actually just stores the data. It stores data in properties like daily forecast, hourly forecast, sunrise and sunset. And it doesn't have any implementation. The implementation is here in weather model fake, which extends weather model, and weather model W underground, which also extends weather model. And if I want to add different weather services, I just create yet another type, weather model underscore something, which extends from weather model. So in our case, we'll be connecting to the W underground service every 15 minutes by calling method update. In this method update, we would like to connect to the internet and get the weather information. And then we would like to update the hourly forecast and update the 10-day forecast. And let's create those methods. We'll first look at the get weather data method. Here's where we'll make a connection to the service online. And everything related to online is in the system.net namespace. System.net. In the system.net namespace, we have the web request class, which doesn't have a constructor. It, instead, we're using a static method create. Uh, here we provide the request URI. Let's go to the API reference to see what the URL we need to do to get the forecast. It's right here at the bottom. All right, we have a request. Um, but just by creating it, we don't communicate with the internet. We do a communication only when we try to get a response. So request dot get response async. Uh, this is an asynchronous method which needs to be awaited. Uh, here IntelliSense shows us how to do it. Web response x equals await get response async. So let's do that. Bar response. Yes, await. Since we are awaiting, this method needs to be asynchronous and return a task. And since get weather data is asynchronous, we want to await this one as well. And since we're awaiting, this update method needs to be asynchronous and return a task. But now we see that uh, the weather model and actually not the weather model but the base model enforces update to be a, a void method. So let's just make it a task and now in the error list we'll see all the places that we need to refactor to go ahead with our change. You'll notice that uh, in the implementation here I have an override async method, but in the base model, I don't say async. And the reason is that we just can't do it in C Sharp. Uh, the async can be only used in methods that have a body. Uh, so that's okay. We just say that this method will return a task and the actual implementation will say that it's async. Okay, let's go to the error list by one by one and change every single void to an async task. And in the base model, we will await this task. To await, we need to make this event handler also async. 
And here's an exception. Event handlers, they need to have a signature of void and then taking a two params object and event args. And that's okay. When a method is void, it can be asynchronous. It will just give you really hard time with exceptions. So what we should do, we should try to catch those exceptions. But if we had any mean to handle it, we would do it here. Uh, essentially, if we don't do it, then the whole application will crash. Let's commit this change. And let's go back to where what we were doing originally. Okay, so here we have this response. Uh, now, here's a using pattern, which disposes of the response when we're done with it. We'll say using variable response is request get response async. And now the response lives only between those braces. And when we hit here, the response is automatically disposed without us having to explicitly do it. One gotcha about the response is that it doesn't have the plain text response. It has a stream with a response. So we'll again use the using pattern because we need to create and then dispose of a stream reader, which will read that response for us. Stream reader, it lives in a system.il namespace and we pass in a stream as a parameter. Response that get response stream and only now we can say that read to end and since we're in an async method we might as well do it asynchronously and let's assign it to a variable actually we'll make it a field and we'll do the same thing with the 10-day forecast. Um, it's right here, forecast 10-day. The only difference is in the URL we have forecast 10-day. This part of programming will be very data intensive. We'll be taking data from one format and we'll be transforming into another format. Uh, and it will be great for us to actually see the data that we're working with. For me, it will be great to know what I'm doing and for you, it will be great so that you can follow me. Hey, so I just did a little behind the scene operation here. I used a live to fetch the raw response hourly and raw response 10 day. And uh, I put them right here in uh, strings cached one and cached two. And instead of calling the update method, we'll use this method alive and uh, transfer the execution here to for example update with hourly data so that we can work with this response without pinging the server over and over again now we're in a fun part of the programming and we just need to extract data from this big string uh, so how do we do it? This string is a JSON formatted string. So we'll be using the newtonsoft.json library. Uh, right click on references, uh, hit manage nugget references. And under browse, here it is, newtonsoft.json. It's so popular, it's uh, number two. We'll install it. And we'll be using the J object. J object is in the newtonsoft.json.link namespace. And jobject has a method parse, which just takes the string, which is a JSON. Let's take a look at the J object. Uh, it is a dictionary with a key, which is a string. And that means that we can access the values stored within the J object using a string indexer. So let's give it a try. Equals JSON. response. We said the response is the first uh, first few lines that has version terms of service features. So let's try to do version. Uh, it just looks like using a multidimensional array accessed by strings. Here's my version 0 
So now let's get the interesting stuff. Uh, we have this hourly forecast and looks like it is uh, a JSON array because it has a square bracket here. And we're interested in the next 24 hours. We'll take the first 24 elements. Okay, and here we have 24 hourly forecast. We see that this one is for the hour 21, aka 9 p.m. This one is 22, which is 10 p.m. So the goal here is to create a list of weather details model. And here we can provide conditions, rainfall, snowfall, temperature to this weather details model. So we just need to fetch this data from uh, right here. So let's start with uh, conditions. Conditions will be hourly condition. Chance of rain. Okay, so here, here is our first property. Uh, now we would like to add the forecast to the list of hourly forecasts at the end. Hourly forecast add forecast. Ah, there's a gotcha. Um, the J object contains J object, so we just need to do a to string if you want to fetch a string and now the problems are solved so all we need to do now is uh, just fetch more information from here let's try temperature temperature is a number so first we need to extract a string then we need to convert it to an integer temp and then metric to string okay we have five so now to convert it to a number just do int 32 dot parse okay great we can just uh, copy and paste this what else do we have Rainfall and snowfall, those will be similar. Uh, let's take a look at the raw data in its full glory. I think the QPF sounds like quart per foot or something, I don't know what it is, but well, snow is snow. This is probably percentage of precipitation and this number looks like pressure, mean sea level pressure maybe. So by method of elimination, I believe that QPF is the only thing which indicates the rain. So we'll just stick with that for now and see how it goes. So QPF, and we also have snowfall. This one was easy, snow. Okay, and uh, as we go through time, we can see that temperature is six degrees, five degrees, yeah, speaking of time, the last thing we need to do is provide time for this uh, forecast. It is a date time. And what we receive here in hourly, we have hours, minutes, year, month. We also have epoch. It is a Unix timestamp. So let's convert it to the C sharps date time. .NET 4.6 comes with a date time offset type, which has this useful method from Unix time seconds, and we just pass in the uh, raw epoch. Actually, it's a long, so we need to make it an int 64. And it looks like this is the right time. This is uh, tomorrow's date. So we'll just stick it in here under time, it equals epoch, but uh, this is a daytime offset, we need daytime, so we'll just say we'll get daytime from that daytime offset. 
Okay, and it looks like our forecast is correct. So now we can just clean up the code and eventually we update the model's hourly forecast with this hourly forecast that we just constructed. And now we'll take this exact code and put it here in update with 10 day data. Um, so we'll start life again. And we we'll write here. But now our response is different, so we need to use completely different names here. So, first of all, our forecast hides under forecast. Forecast. Uh, there's quite a lot of errors. The errors are null reference exceptions because every single name here is different than it was in the hourly forecast. It looks like we have a complete forecast and there's a new one every single day. So the last thing we need to do is set up the daily forecast and lastly we go to the app.zaml.cs where we select the model to use so here we have weather model instead of weather model underscore fake we'll use the w underground and now going back to our conversion from non-asynchronous to asynchronous code uh, we might as well await on all those updates and make this async. All right, let's see what happens. Okay. All right, so here is 10 a.m., 11, 12, chance of rain, six degrees. Uh, here's the weather for the upcoming days. Um, it looks like this is the high temperature, 6, and 2 low, because we have positive 4 and negative 1. Uh, the UI definitely needs to be reworked, and we'll do it soon. But for now, it looks like we have the right information. So, uh, let's recap. We are using the J object to parse. It parses a string, and then everything it parses is available uh, as a dictionary accessible by strings. So this way we could access all the information from the API just by using strings. So the good thing here is that we don't need to use any third-party library that creates types and whatnot. Uh, everything is just stringly typed and we access the data that we want. It's uh, very straightforward. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon.